gonna do a chemical reaction right now that is called the Wusher bottle. You'll notice that I've got a very large water bottle here. I've got some strapping tape around it just to make sure that uh, this is a safe chemical reaction because there is going to be fire involved as well as a flammable chemical. In the jug, I have ethanol. Ethanol is an organic chemical. It's C2H5OH. And I'm just going to add a little tiny bit of ethanol. It is a liquid. I'm gonna put this far off the camera there. And I've added a little bit of ethanol to my Wisher bottle. And I'm going to start mixing it up with the purpose of vaporizing it. So I can see that there's a little bit of liquid. And I want the ethanol to become a vapor. So I'm just watching it very carefully. And what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to light the very tippy top of the bottle. And so the ethanol is going to be lit on fire. If you listen carefully, you can hear a little bit of the ethanol escaping as I remove my hand. Almost sounds like a little fart or something like that. Okay, so it looks like it is nice and vaporized at this point. I'm gonna pour any excess out. And while I turn off the lights, I'm just gonna use a little tiny ball to kind of prevent any of the vapor from coming out. And I just washed any excess liquid that might be on my hand. I'm gonna turn off a little bit of the lights. I'm gonna light a candle and then we're going to ignite the very tippy top of the bottle and the ethanol vapors are gonna light on fire. So let's take a look at how this goes. Okay, so I've got my candle. The candle always allows me to kind of step out of the way to keep myself safe when I'm doing a chemical reaction. All right, so we call this the Wusher bottle. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. Let's talk about what was going on in the chemical reaction. If you've got ethanol, ethanol has a formula of C2H5OH. We've mentioned a couple times that nothing burns unless you have oxygen present. And of course, oxygen is present in the air that you breathe. So think about it, C2H5OH, that's a compound that's very rich in carbons and hydrogens. Hydrocarbons, by the way, can have oxygen in the formula. Um, they don't always, but um, as long as you've got a lot of carbons and hydrogens in there, we consider that a hydrocarbon. Uh, the oxygen is the other reactant that was necessary to burn. This is a combustion reaction. Stop and think about the products of a combustion reaction. Uh, you're always going to get carbon dioxide vapor as well as water vapor. So think about what was happening here. As the oxygen was being pulled in from the atmosphere, the chemical reaction was producing hot vapors that were expanding. So the carbon dioxide and water vapor are trying to escape at the same time that the oxygen gas was being pushed in, uh, being pulled in. Uh, hence, we get that funny whooshing sound, which is why we call that the Wisher bottle. So a great example of a combustion reaction. In this section, we will learn about predicting products of combustion reactions. Combustion reactions are defined as having a hydrocarbon and oxygen as reactants and having them turn into the products carbon dioxide and water. A hydrocarbon can all often be written as CXHY. That simply means that the subscripts can change. They don't always have to be the same number. They fluctuate. 
What's consistent on the reactant side is that you will always see oxygen gas being used from the atmosphere. Oxygen gas is a necessary ingredient to have a hydrocarbon burn. On the product side, we always see the same two products, carbon dioxide and water. You will notice that both of these products are in the gaseous state. That is because combustion reactions are exothermic. They release a lot of heat, meaning the carbon dioxide and water are produced as gases due to the high temperatures. If you take a look at the hydrocarbon and you see the subscripts X and Y, just to clarify that for a moment, Let's look at a few examples of hydrocarbons. The first is CH4. This is known as methane. That, of course, is an organic chemistry name. In first year chemistry, you might call that carbon tetrahydride. The second example that you see, C8H18, is called octane, the primary component, component in gasoline. The third example that I'm showing you, C12H22O11, is the formula for sugar. This formula might look a little bit different to you than the first two. Hydrocarbons, once in a while, will have oxygen atoms in them as well, but it's not necessary for a combustion reaction. In the combustion demonstration that you saw, a small amount of liquid ethanol was added to a plastic water bottle. The ethanol was vaporized and then a match was used to light the liquid on fire. The ethanol reacted with the oxygen, producing the gases carbon dioxide and water. To write a balanced equation, we'll start off with the formula for ethanol. Unless you've taken organic chemistry, this is probably one you will not know. Ethanol is written as C2H5OH. When the liquid ethanol vaporized, those vapors were able to react with oxygen in the air, and the flame helped get the two gases ignited, producing carbon dioxide and water vapor. Oftentimes, the hardest thing about combustion reactions is balancing the equation. In this particular case, we can balance the equation by putting a three in front of the oxygen, a two in front of the carbon dioxide, and a three in front of the water. A few things about combustion reactions to remember. As we mentioned, you always need hydrocarbon and oxygen on the reactant side. A hydrocarbon is any compound containing the elements hydrogen and carbon. And sometimes you will see oxygen in the formula as well, but it's not necessary. Two products always form in a combustion reaction, carbon dioxide and water. Just a side note on that. Combustion reactions should be one of the easiest types of reactions for you to predict the products of. Once you recognize a hydrocarbon and oxygen as the reactants, you immediately know that the products are carbon dioxide and water. Don't make it any more difficult than that. Let's predict the products of three combustion reactions. In the first example, we have methane gas, which is often in a chemistry classroom, being reacted with oxygen gas. The two products of this chemical reaction are carbon dioxide and water vapor. Again, with predicting the products of combustion reactions, don't make it harder than it ought to be. The products are always the same and always carbon dioxide and water vapor. The second example is called propanol. When this reacts with oxygen, let's predict what the products would be. Hopefully you've been paying attention and you now know that the products here are very simple. Again, we see the same products, carbon dioxide and water. 
In the third chemical reaction, we have octane, C8H18. It reacts with oxygen, it will burn, and it will produce carbon dioxide and water vapor. Oftentimes, the hardest part about combustion reactions is actually going back and balancing the equation. As you can see, oxygen is shown in several of the compounds and on the left-hand side in the elemental state. That simply makes it more challenging for you to balance. I'm gonna show you the coefficients in front, but it's a good idea for you to practice this on your own. In the second and third equation, you'll notice that I have a two in front of the hydrocarbon. There are many chemistry teachers that will allow you to use fractions when you balance equations. For my students, for now, until we learn more about moles, I prefer if you do not use fractions and continue to use whole numbers. This concludes our combustion tutorial. Thank you for watching this series of six chemistry videos. On a side note, Predicting products can be a really difficult topic for some students. It takes a lot of practice. Remember to always do the following. Analyze your reactants, classify the type of chemical reaction, and use your common sense when you write the formulas of elements and ionic compounds. Keep practicing predicting products of chemical reactions. And even though this is a hard topic, keep something in mind. Chemistry is an amazing class. The more you learn about chemistry, the more you're going to realize how much chemistry makes up your everyday life. Thank you again for watching this series of six videos.